Hello and welcome to today's session with Ace the English Hub, a learning platform for students of English. Today's session is about a most often asked question by students of English. History of English literature. Why, what and how to study. Let us go to the first question that is why. Why do we have to study history of English literature? The first point is it provides the basic foundation for our literature course. You understand how literature became what it is now. You learn the backgrounds of works. Why a writer wrote what he or she wrote. It helps you to connect with the works and writers that you learn. You learn more about them and it helps you to better appreciate their works. The next question is, what do we have to study in this paper? There are four major categories you need to study here. You understand that history is divided into various ages or periods, which are a way of categorizing and classifying timelines. So we have a timeline here. History of English literature is divided into these periods from Old English and moving to postmodernism. Each period has its own peculiarities which help us to better understand the works of a particular period. Now, how do we determine these particularities? Here, we study the political, religious and social backgrounds of a particular period. We take one period and ask these questions. Who ruled? How was the rule? What happened? What was the religion? What did people do? What did they wear? Did they wage wars and who won? Next, what we see in each age is the writers. We categorize them again as poets, dramatists, prose writers and novelists. And the last thing we see is the important works of the period. Who wrote what and what are their important features? Next, we come to the most important question of all. How do we study this paper? Let's discuss some techniques to study. The first technique is to create a mind map. You can create it for an age or for a writer or for a specific essay you are trying to learn. You can either draw them on a large sheet of paper with different colors or do it online with the help of websites that help you create mind maps for free. Paste them on your wall. Look at them every time. It improves your ability to memorize points. Now the second technique is mnemonic strategies. Use acronyms. Now if you want to remember the three important poets of modern age, Yeats, Eliot and Auden use their first letters. Yeah. Now create rhymes and songs of your own. Here I have made a short song to remember the most important works of Milton. Milton first wrote on nativity, l'allegro penseroso companion poems, commas lizardus mask and elegy, areopagitica for the press. Paradise Lost and Paradise Regained, Samson Drama and 23 Sonnets. Now make songs, give it a tune, sing it out loud. You can even create raps. They could all work. Another important strategy is the method of Loki. Remember Sherlock and his mind palace? Now if you want to remember the works of Shakespeare and the periods in which they were written, Imagine all the works sitting in each room of your house. In the hall, you will find Venus and Lucrece on one side, the two gentlemen of Verona and Titus on the other side, and Richard the second and third lounging on your sofa. Now you go to your dining room. There is Romeo and Juliet. They are chit-chatting with the merry wives of Windsor. Henry the fourth and fifth are on the other side of the table, worrying about nothing over a night's dream. Now, in the bedroom is where all the major tragedies happen on the twelfth night. And it all happens because of the shrew. 
all of them were rightly measured a sudden tempest rose winter came in you can hear the cymbals banging and coriolanus and pericles they go out through the back door see make a story out of it and remember everything easily the third technique on how to do it is by chunking instead of remembering a large cluster of data create smaller chunks for better memory for example to remember the names of different periods of english literary history in its correct order divide the ages into smaller chunks now we have omr nrv mp now that is easier to remember than the whole list the fourth method is the association method you associate something you don't know with something you can easily remember for example if you find it difficult to remember the poet who developed the sprung rhythm associate sprung with spring and what does spring do when you push it it hops voila you have hopkins the last method for today is creating flash cards write down those important points writers works themes write them all down in small cards just the points and use them for quick revision so remember when you study history of english literature believe it's possible to learn everything be creative with your study techniques and succeed with great ease thank you we'll see you again next week with another bite sized topic for easy learning find more content on our facebook channel like share and subscribe if you find our content useful